Hi everyone, Dr. Kofi here and welcome to my YouTube channel. It is Tutor Med, where everything medicine is simplified. In today's video, we want to discuss how phototherapy works to resolve jaundice in newborns. We will discuss the science behind phototherapy and some complications of phototherapy. Kindly support this channel by liking and sharing this video and other videos here. And kindly subscribe if you have not done that yet. Alright everyone, grab your notepads and let's begin. Let's begin the discussion by showing pictures of newborns who are jaundiced. Neonatal jaundice can manifest as yellowish discoloration of the eye, as shown in this first patient. Examine his eyes and you'll see they are yellow and that is neonatal jaundice. And if the jaundice is relatively severe, the yellowish discoloration can be seen in the skin spreading from the head to the toe and so a yellowish skin as seen in the second baby is also neonatal jaundice. This presupposes that if you have a child who is jaundiced and the jaundice can be seen in the soles of the child's feet, then that child has a relatively severe jaundice than a child whose jaundice or whose yellowish discoloration ends in the skin of the chest and so this means that the second baby has a more severe jaundice than the first now neonatal jaundice is due to an elevation of a chemical or a pigment called bilirubin and so we will talk about this later in subsequent slides Now we will discuss the reasons why newborns may have jaundice in another lecture. But this pigment, bilirubin, can exist as unconjugated bilirubin and then conjugated bilirubin. To simplify this, the pigment bilirubin is produced from broken down red blood cells and it is sent to the liver for a process called conjugation. This process aims to make bilirubin water soluble so that it can be easily excreted. And so bilirubin, before it gets to the liver, is unconjugated, but becomes conjugated after it goes through the liver. Now, elevation of unconjugated bilirubin above a certain level can be toxic to the baby's brain. That is the unconjugated bilirubin. Elevated conjugated bilirubin is not toxic to the brain, but when present, it indicates an underlying problem which needs probing or investigation. And so we are very concerned when the unconjugated bilirubin rises because of the danger of brain damage. And so phototherapy is one of the ways to reduce the level of unconjugated bilirubin. And so how does phototherapy work to reduce the levels of the unconjugated bilirubin? Now phototherapy, as the name suggests, means providing therapy using light. And so this is a phototherapy machine and this is another phototherapy machine. Now this is the light source and here we have the baby's cot and so the baby is put in the baby's cot with the eyes and perineum covered and the light source is turned on the light source gives blue light with a wavelength ranging between 420 to 470 nanometers now the bilirubin in the skin or in the body is able to absorb this wavelength and undergoes various reactions we will see soon and these reactions will reduce the levels of the unconjugated bilirubin 
Now, historically, the terms intensive phototherapy and then conventional or standard phototherapy were used. Intensive phototherapy was used when the phototherapy was applied at a high irradiance. It means the light source had a very high intensity. And then standard or conventional therapy, the term was used when the phototherapy was applied at a relatively lower irradiance or a lower light intensity. Now, intensive phototherapy is the standard of care and so there is no need to make a distinction between an intensive phototherapy and a conventional phototherapy. And so phototherapy is intensive phototherapy because now intensive phototherapy is the standard of care. Now this is a picture showing a baby undergoing phototherapy. What can you see? Now, before the therapy is started, the baby's eyes are covered with an opaque shield and so the baby is given an eye shield. Why? Because we want to prevent retinal damage. And then, the baby's perineum is covered. Why? This is for hygienic purposes only. We don't want the baby defecating into the court. But I must mention that some books have said that this also prevents damage to the testicles for the males. And so it prevents gonadal damage. But the main reason is for hygienic purposes. And then the baby is placed supine with a maximum or most of the skin exposed or the body exposed. And then the light source, given the blue light, is placed about 45 centimeters above the baby and then turned on. Now, when the baby is exposed to this light source, like I said earlier, the bilirubin would absorb this light and then undergo photochemical reactions aiming to reduce the levels of the unconjugated bilirubin. And so let's look at the photochemical reactions it undergoes in the next slide. Alright friends, please do not forget to like and share this video if you are pleased with it and then subscribe to our channel if you haven't done that yet. Now I want to repeat this statement again that the bilirubin in the skin absorbs the blue light and then it undergoes photochemical reactions. Now what are the reactions? You see, the native bilirubin, the one which is potentially toxic, I mean the unconjugated one, exists in a form called 4Z15Z bilirubin. 4Z15Z bilirubin. And so, when this bilirubin or pigment absorbs the blue light, the blue light is able to convert it reversibly into another form of bilirubin called 4Z15E bilirubin and so this conversion is a reversible process it means that once you interrupt the phototherapy there is a tendency to reconvert 4Z15E bilirubin back to 4Z15Z bilirubin and so what I want to say here is that one of the mechanisms by which we reduce the potentially toxic bilirubin levels is to undergo a reversible reaction where it is converted into a 4Z15E bilirubin which is itself um, an unconjugated bilirubin but less toxic. Now we should take note of the fact that the liver can only excrete bilirubin when it is conjugated and then i must say that one of the reasons why newborns have an elevated unconjugated bilirubin is that their liver is not so or their liver conjugation system is not so developed to be conjugating large amounts of bilirubin and so that is why they may have an elevated 
unconjugated bilirubin. However, the 1415E bilirubin, which is the new convert, is an unconjugated bilirubin all right, but this form can be excreted by the liver even without conjugation. And so the liver can excrete 14Z15E bilirubin without conjugating it. And so you get the picture that phototherapy has converted a toxic unconjugated bilirubin into another unconjugated bilirubin which can be excreted by the liver even without conjugation. And so that is one of the mechanisms by which the phototherapy would reduce the levels of unconjugated bilirubin. Another mechanism is that the blue light is also able to convert the 4Z, 15Z bilirubin by an irreversible process into another isomer called lumirubin. This is an irreversible process. Now I must say that for the kidneys to be able to excrete bilirubin again, the bilirubin has to be in a conjugated form. So the first is for the liver. So I'm saying that for the kidneys to excrete bilirubin, the bilirubin should be in a conjugated form. And so uh, lumirubin is an unconjugated bilirubin, but it can be excreted by the kidneys without conjugation. And so basically, what phototherapy does is that it converts the toxic unconjugated bilirubin into a less toxic unconjugated bilirubin and then these unconjugated bilirubins can be excreted by the kidney and the liver even without conjugation although these organs necessarily need conjugated bilirubins before they can excrete them and so please take note of that and so these are the two main ways phototherapy helps to reduce the levels of bilirubin uh, or conjugated bilirubin in the blood. Kindly note that phototherapy is not used when the patient has jaundice which is caused by elevated conjugated bilirubin. And so please take note of that. And please take note of the fact that the first process is a reversible process. And so once you interrupt the, physio, uh, the phototherapy I wanted to say, there can be a reconversion back into the toxic unconjugated bilirubin. That is why it is advised that once phototherapy is started, the interruptions should be minimized so that the 4Z15Z can be converted into 4Z15E bilirubin. And so on this slide, let's quickly go through the complications of phototherapy. And so it is a very good and helpful um, procedure for patients with neonatal jaundice from an excessively elevated unconjugated um, bilirubin. But it has some complications we should take note of. And so it can cause dehydration because the heat can cause evaporation of um, water from the body it can cause overheating because the light energy can overheat the baby's skin the baby can have loose stools or can have diarrhea then it can cause hypothermia because the baby has been exposed to remember the baby's body is um, exposed um, completely and so the baby may be exposed to cold weather and might have hypothermia and then it can cause photodermatitis okay photodermatitis so you have skin reactions as a result of the light rays um, i mean entering the skin and then one of the most common is erythematous macules and so you'd have um very small reddenings on the on the patient's skin if the patient is a fair uh, colored uh, baby if the patient is dark you may not see these erythematous macules then another complication is something we call bronze baby syndrome and so bronze baby syndrome happens in patients who have um, conjugated hyperbilirubinemia it means that their jaundice was caused by conjugated hyperbilirubinemia remember we said that in such patients we do not do phototherapy for them we don't do phototherapy for them 
So if you do phototherapy for someone whose jaundice is as a result of an elevated conjugated bilirubin instead of an unconjugated bilirubin, the patient may have a bronze baby syndrome. This syndrome, the skin looks like bronze. But sometimes you can have a mixed picture. A mixed picture means that you have elevated unconjugated bilirubinemia uh, and then elevated uh, conjugated bilirubin. Okay, and so although both are elevated, once the unconjugated has gone up such that it can cause brain damage, you still need to do the phototherapy, although the conjugated is also raised. And so such patients would have bronze baby syndrome. It is better to have a skin which looks like bronze than to spare the skin and then later get um, brain damage. And so bronze baby syndrome, yes. And so these complications can be remembered by using the mnemonic hold BP. Hold BP. And so H for the hypothermia, then O for the overheating, the L for loose tools, D for the dehydration, B for bronze baby syndrome, and then P for photodermatitis. And so this is the end of our discussion today. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Tutor Med. And kindly do not forget to share this video, like this video, leave your comments or your questions in the comment section below, and then subscribe to our channel if you have not done that yet. So see you in the next video and until then, bye.